guys, in this video I want to build myself another one of these little grave diggers, but this time I want to do it a little bit better. So before we start the video, I'm just going to roll a couple of clips of this one in action. Do you have a job you hate? Imagine if you could make more money from the comfort of your own home. That was my dream and it became a reality once I started selling on eBay. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars by selling on eBay and I've now taught hundreds of people my secrets. So just check out the results here from some of my students. So if you're sick of that nine till five and you wanna make more money than a doctor, from the comfort of your own home, then click on the link down below and I'll show you how. So as you can see, it was a little bit on the slow side and I wanna make it faster. So I've got myself a few brushless motors here. I've got a whole little variety going on here so I can see which one's gonna work best because I did actually burn out one of the stock motors because I ran it on 2S, but I did that off the camera. So I've got a few more of these here from Banggood. I'm not sure if they're exactly the same or not, but they look similar. But hopefully one of these brushless ones is what really is gonna give it the power, what it needs. Also, another couple of things I wanna do a little bit differently. Uh, if you have a look at this one here, the upper links are a bit of a funky angle, so it sort of makes the axle behave a little bit weirdly as it moves up and down. So I'm probably gonna put some shorter links on the next one and mount them somewhere else, you'll see. I'll be using a Spectrum receiver again, because then we've got front steer here, and we've also got some rear steer on the toggle switch there. And then for the servos, we've got a couple of these Tower Hobby Metal Gear servos, and they're the same ones that I put into this one here. So the body and the chassis came off of this Spin Master monster truck here, and the wheels and tires come off of this Spin Master truck here. Now for the running gear, on this one I used the transmission and the motor out of one of these little cars here, and the axles out of one of these Devastators. And that's how we get the front and rear steering. Now on the next build, I wanna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna use both axles from this one here, because from the last one, I've still got the front axle left over, and then from this one here, I'm gonna have another one. So if they fit, then I'm gonna use them. If they don't, then I'll be using some more axles from another one of these. Other than that, I'm gonna do it pretty much the same and maybe show you a few bits that I didn't show you on the first build video. So I'm gonna put a link up here to the first build video. On this build video, I'm gonna try and go a little bit more in detail. So I hope you enjoy it. All right, less waffle, less procrastination. Let's start wrenching. So there you go, it does look pretty cool, it does look fairly realistic, but when we look at it underneath, it's nothing like the real thing. The chassis is way too wide, there's no proper axles under there, there's only two-wheel drive. When we compare this to my version, it's a lot more realistic. So first thing that you have to do on this is remove the actual body and this chassis from its main chassis, and that's four little clips there. Now I find it easiest just to cut these little clip things off here. And by the way, if you want to see what this thing runs like, I did briefly run it on the first build video. Beast. 
I'm gonna put a link to that video up here. So this bit we no longer need, although you could use these wheels and tires if you wanted to. But I'm gonna use the wheels and tires from this model here because they're a lot more realistic. So here we are left with the body and chassis that we're gonna use. Although we are gonna narrow the bottom section just to make it a lot more realistic. Next, the chassis has gotta come away from the body. So here we are left with a chassis which does look very realistic. It's even got the top half of the roll cage. Now we do need to remove a few parts and narrow it down a little bit down the bottom here. So let's do that next. So you want to cut here as close to the outside as what you can. Same on that side. Now we're going to be using this piece again later on so don't go losing it. And then on the nose, if you cut it just after where these two tubes meet, and the same on the other side, you want to be looking at around about a 39 millimeter from outer rail to outer rail. So with that pushed together, yeah, it's a tiny bit more, but we can adjust that later. It's always better to leave it a little bit long so you can cut more off later. If you cut too much off, it's going to make it more difficult. Now, if we look at this one here, I glued everything together with hot glue. And a few people said, ah, it looks a little bit messy. And yes, I agree, but it does get the job done. So somebody said, uh, maybe I can glue it with acetone. So I've never tried it before, but I do know that acetone does melt some plastics so I've got a couple of pieces here that I know I'm not going to use and I'm going to have a look to see if they're actually glue together a ball dunk these into the acetone and just see if it oops drop that one right in there I suppose that'll be a good test to see if it melts all right well not much is happening yet so I think I'm going to let it just chill there for a minute and then we come back to it a little bit later. By the way, here's another build that I'm doing at the moment. I'm just putting a Toyan four-stroke engine into this crawler. I'm just waiting for an E-Revo, not an E-Revo, a Revo 3.3 transmission to come. And then we can hopefully get this thing driving fairly soonish. So let's have a quick look at some of these brushless motors. By the way, I'm going to put a link down below about all the motors here and all the other stuff that I'm using for this build. So this here is a stock motor that I burnt out and we compare this to the Banggood motor, it does look almost the same, but the pinion shaft on the Banggood motor is a little bit shorter, so I don't think that's gonna work. So here's option one. Now this motor here is a little bit on the small side. Ideally, we're looking at around about 10 millimeter hole centers. Eh, it's not far out, but a little bit small. So this one here, about the same diameter as the last motor, but it's a little bit longer. Still a little bit small on the holes here, but still got potential maybe. Next, we have this one here, and oh, that looks even smaller. I mean, the hole centers here are just about right, and I think it will go in. We've got a 1.5 millimeter shaft diameter. Same on that one, so this will actually fit, but I don't know if it's gonna be any more power or any more reliable, because it is fairly small. Next, we've got this surplus hobby motor. This one looks pretty promising. So we're almost the exact same length, Diameter wise, 15.3, 15, so around about the same diameter and shaft size, 1.5, oh, two millimeters. So we are half a millimeter bigger on the shaft size and here's the pinion that's gonna go on there and it does look like we can probably open that hole out slightly and not really affect it too much. So, so far, this one's gonna be the best contender. Now, last but not least, I've got this Leopard Hobby brushless system. This comes with the motor and the speed controller. So here's the motor. Again, we're looking at about the same length, one millimeter more on the diameter, slightly more on the hole centers, and we've still got two millimeter shaft diameter. Now, we don't have too much more room to play with in there, but I think one of these two are gonna be the ones we're gonna run with. Now, this one here is a 6,000 kV, and this one here is a 12,000 kV. So what that means is that this one here is gonna have double the speed of this one, but this one here, in theory, is going to have double the amount of torque. So I'm kind of thinking, put the more torquey one in there first, see how it runs, and then if it's way too slow, uh, then we can put this motor in it here to give it a bit more speed. On the other side of the coin, if this is still going to be way too fast with this motor and not enough torque, then we could rob the transmission out of one of these because these are a lot lower geared than this one here. So I've got a little bit more shaving down to do on this chassis here. I've had to shave a little bit off of these fake shocks here to make room for the real shocks. I've filed down where these exhausts are so that I can fit the exhausts from this one here. Trimmed a couple of bits under here, you know, these body mounts here. Removed that bit. Always cut away from yourself, guys, never towards you. Because you're bound to slip 
And if you slip going away, it doesn't matter. If you slip going towards, uh-oh. Oh, guys, a sharp blade helps a lot too. So there we go, got it all shaved down, got all these other bits and bobs cut off. You could probably do a bit of a neater job of it, but I haven't really got all day and I want to get this thing together. So next, I've got to take apart this RGT Adventurer. Now, somebody said in the last build, they said, why don't you just buy the parts and then you don't need to ruin the whole model. And yes, you could do that. And if you look at FTX mini Outback parts, they're going to be the same as this one. So you could just buy the transmission and all the other parts separately. Maybe it'll work out cheaper, I don't know. But for me, it was a lot more simple to just get a whole working model and just take out the complete units. So to get the transmission out, we've got four screws here. And then we've got a few screws to get the axle off as well. So next we've got to take the motor out and then we're going to see if we can mount the brushless one in there. And to get it out you've got a couple of screws on this cover here. And then to get to that actual motor screw you have to remove the spur gear. And then you can get to the two motor screws. So to get this brushless motor to go in we have to make the centre hole a little bit bigger because it's not quite big enough to get it through. And also these two motor holes here. They are slightly out, so I'm going to have to make these holes a little bit bigger with this needle file. But before that, let's have a little look at the acetone. So that's actually done nothing to it. It hasn't melted at all. There's no way that that is going to glue, so I'm going to have to stick with a glue gun. Oh, right, so I've made the holes bigger, but now I've got the motor out. And looking at these other alternative Banggood motors, it looks to be, if you get that pinion on there in the same position as the other motor, then I reckon it would actually work. But anyway, I've got a brand new pinion here. And I need to drill this centre hole out slightly so that it fits onto this brushless motor here. So the motor shaft is two millimetres. So I'm going to use a drill bit that's slightly smaller so we've got a nice interference fit. And then I've got to carefully drill this out without drilling into my fingers and without ruining the pinion gear. Now, with a bit of luck, that's going to push onto there perfectly. Hmm, it's still tight. Now, my next size up drill bit is a 2mm, and that's going to be too big. So, I think I'm going to have to use the existing drill bit and just give it a little bit of a wiggle. Ho <laughs> ho! Check it out! Now you want to be careful when you do the centre nut up, you don't really want to do it up tight at all. You just want to just do it up enough so it touches the spur gear. If you start cranking this down, you're just going to force that spur gear into the gearbox and it's all going to jam up. So look at that. That is turning perfectly. The motor's mounted. Oh guys, this is going to work. So next I've got to mount the transmission into the chassis. Now I want to extend the wheelbase slightly. So if we have a look at this one here, we can see that this transmission section is sort of to the forward position. I'm using these metal arms here from the Devastator on the rear, and I'm using the front arms from uh, the other one. Uh, but these front arms, these are actually shorter. So I'm thinking if I can move this whole transmission assembly back, it's going to extend the wheelbase about, around about four millimeters that way. And then also on the front end, if I fit longer arms, uh, these arms are around about eight mil millimeters longer than these ones. That's going to give us an extra four millimeters on the front as well. So when we look at four millimeters here, that's going to bring us roughly in the center of this piece here. So I'm just going to mark the center here just by scratching it with these calipers. And then I want to put the hole in line with the center of this tube here. I'm just using a body reamer here to mark out the center. Then I've got a drill bit here, what's the same size as the holes that are in the chassis. And I can carefully drill out that first hole. And then do the same on the other side. So next I'm gonna use the old chassis and put it over the top of the other new chassis, put a screw through the first hole. Now we can use the rest of these holes as a template for drilling our holes. So 
So now I've got to do the same on the other side and then we can mount the transmission. Oh, all right, there we go, all the holes made. Oh, right, all mounted up and it's starting to resemble more of a true monster truck chassis. So next I've got to mount the axles and I've got to get some more of these links here, really. I could pinch them off of this model, but I've got some more coming in the mail. And I think this video is long enough now for the first part of the series. It's probably going to be like a three or a four part series. I've already done like a brief build with this one. So if you don't want to see it all in massive full detail, you can watch this video. The link to that video is up here. The idea of this build here is to try and improve on where I went wrong with this one and try to make this one a little bit better, but also do it in a lot more detail so some of you guys can follow along and maybe build the same thing. Now, none of this stuff here is set in stone, guys. Remember, this is my prototype build. I've not built one exactly like this yet. It's got some sort of differences to this. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Some things might end up being differently. Uh, so this is not really a step-by-step -step build guide yet. So if you're going to start tackling one of these and building one yourself, then I would wait until I finish this whole complete build series so you can make sure that everything's going to line up and everything's going to fit. Otherwise, you can just follow along this build here because this one's already worked. Thank <laughs> you.